Everybody wants us to win by a lot of points. But it's not how it's going to go this time. We've got to be prepared for a grind out game. We showed the last three games we can grind it out. Max, I want to start with you on this one. Yep. Do you have a problem with Durant's comments here? I'm going to be unfair to Kevin Durant right now. Okay. I do. Because, look, I understand to begin with that this is not one of our super teams. Mm -hmm. In 04, when we didn't win the gold, only two of the top 11 American MVP finishers, right, of the top 12 MVP, only two of the top 11 who were American were on the team. Didn't have Shaq, didn't have Kobe, didn't have Garnett. We didn't win. In 2012, when we did, all five of the top MVP finishers uh, Ameri were on the team, were on the American team. So we crushed everyone. Right now, Durant is the only one of the top five MVP finishers on the team. So we recognize it's not an, uh, one of those super teams. It's not a dream team. We had the dream team. We had the redeem team, redeem team two, whatever you want to call it. And now we have this, which is more in line with the kind of American teams that don't win the gold medal, partly because the rest of the world is caught up. They're playing against other NBA caliber players, not always all stars, but guys in rotations, national teams that are used to playing together when these guys are kind of thrown together, I get all Stephen A. But Garnett is and should be compared to the greatest players who ever lived. Excuse me, Garnett. Kevin Durant is and should be compared to the greatest players who ever lived. And, and, and it's just not his kind of personality, but one of the reasons that Kobe and LeBron, as LeBron became a mature player, were so critical on the Redeem team is that they set the tone. They held players accountable. They elevated the level of play. They even call, all Kobe does is shoot. No, no, no. They have a positive influence in terms of the winning culture and what's expected of the team. And when you look at Kevin Durant on paper, you watch him on the court. LeBron James, the greatest small forward who ever lived. Past Larry Bird. Kevin Durant should be nipping at his heels. But if you talk about the greatest small forwards who ever lived, Larry Bird is still going to come in ahead of Durant. Well, it's because Larry Bird won championships as the alpha on championship teams that had other Hall of Fame players, including Kevin McHale and others, and a former MVP of the finals in Dennis Johnson and Parrish and all these guys. Bird was the alpha and the unquestioned best player on those teams that won three championships in an era where you were going up against Western power, you know, conference powerhouses, like especially the Lakers, as we all know. And because of that kind of personality of Bird's, even though when you look at their offense, Bird passed better and rebounded better, more of a kind of like a power forward type. But the way Durant shoots, Durant's size, Durant's ability to get to the, I mean, Durant really should, Durant's ability to play defense in a way that Bird couldn't, because Durant could be an excellent defender when he chooses and is generally underrated. He should be right there. But this little thing in his personality that's, that's really brought to light here, where when you know, the kind of teams that crush the international opposition, those are the legends teams. And this is something less than a legends team. And the best player is Durant, but he really should be in that first category. And, and, and it's that kind of beta personality, I think, that's stopping him from being there. Any, anyone who wants to rip their hair out about that, I get it. It's not fair to hold him or anyone to that standard, but Durant's own abilities and talents and track record so far indicates that that's the group to which he really belongs and yet somehow hasn't yet joined. I think this is a reflection of that. Well, you're wrong on several fronts. Number one, it's totally fair to judge Kevin Durant that way. The way that you judged him, you sort of threw it out the window by saying maybe it's unfair. It's totally fair. He is one of the top three players in the world. Your critique and, and dissection of him is appropriate. It is right on the money. Kevin Durant is one of the top three players in the world. Kevin Durant is a superstar. Kevin Durant should be mentioned amongst the all-time greats in terms of his talent. But his lack of production, meaning a championship, combined with his unwillingness to be that alpha dog per se, has inhibited him. There is no way around it. But let me tell you the points that you're missing more than anything else. Pointing the finger at Kevin Durant in any other way outside of what his talent and leading the way in that regard should, should do, I think you're missing the boat. To me, the people most responsible is Team USA. These are superstars that you got to commit 
to winning a gold medal. Why the hell do you have them in Las Vegas for just a week? And then after just a week, you got these weak scrimmages set up. You know, it's got them in Las Vegas for training camp for a week. And then afterwards, you got these weak scrimmages set up. Excuse me, whether it's Australia or Serbia or France or whomever, these are grown men who play together. The chemistry, the cohesiveness, the camaraderie, all of that stuff is there. Not to mention patriotism, because we might wear the red, white, and blue, and we might sing it, but everything about our nation, as it pertains to professional sports, leans and veers towards individual brands being elevated above all else. You don't get that impression with the other teams, you know, globally. And so that's a disadvantage. That's a challenge that America has to overcome as it pertains to basketball and superstar players. One week of training camp in Vegas, after they've been chilling for the offseason, Lord knows what they were doing in terms of being lackadaisical, understanding that the 82 game season combined with playoff competition is going to take place, lavishing in wealth and fame and beyond, not to mention commercials and building their brand and doing all of this other stuff in the offseason. And all you've got, is one week in Vegas for a training camp, and then after that, the weakest stiffs of competition that you could think of in order to prepare them to go up against grown men, even when you recognize the fact that you can no longer use just college players because you're going up against grown men, makes no sense whatsoever. So I think you've missed the boat in terms of pointing out Kevin Durant, I think more of the onus should be placed on the shoulders of Team USA. If, if Kobe Bryant and LeBron James were on this team, if Kobe still had something left to play and LeBron James, then they could practice for a week and have all those excuses, but they would still make sure the team was ready to go. Now, Team USA hasn't lost. I don't want to get out ahead, but it's three consecutive tight games. Yeah, I got and it. while you're right, chemistry is big, and these other national teams play together and know each other better and everything. When you actually look at the talent on the roster, maybe you'll have two rotation pieces. Yeah. I got you. KD does have the third highest scoring average, only behind MJ and Wilt. But I want to get to another player on that Team USA, Carmelo Anthony. He put up 10 last night. You spoke to him over the weekend. Can you, it was, get it, can it, you share it, that it, with it, us? It, it, was, uh, it, was, it, it, was, it was a rough uh, Friday night, to say the least. Uh, after they played, uh, Team USA played, uh, Carmelo Anthony reached out to me from Rio. And um, he was not pleased at all with what I had to say. And <clears throat> look... I'm a native New York. I'm a diehard Knicks fan. And in most situations, I'll be damned if I apologize about anything with the Knicks. It's 1973 since the championship has come to New York City. And as far as I'm concerned, the quotes that I saw from Carmelo Anthony about a gold medal and it being satisfactory, I meant every damn word I said until he reached out and educated me about the fact that his, his uh, interview was taken completely out of context. He specifically said, according to him, mm -hmm. that, of course, I still got a few years to go. Of course, I'm pursuing an NBA championship, and I'm starving for it. If I look back on my career and I don't win a championship, and what I have to lean on is what I accomplished in college, what I accomplished in the pros, what I accomplished in Olympic competition, I'm going to look at my career as being a great career. But I have unfinished business. Trust me on that. So, in other words, what he was trying to say is that by no means did he give the impression under any circumstances that two or three gold medals would be satisfactory for him. And for me, of all people, to sit up there and to imply otherwise was incredibly insulting to him. Here's where he got me, Max and Molly. I'm very big on this, just so you know, in all my years of covering the NBA. One of the reasons why I don't hesitate to get on cats is because this cell phone right here and my other phone, I am accessible to every NBA player and every athlete that you can find. I'm the easiest reporter in the world to find. If you are a professional athlete and I talk about you, I always make sure whether it's to you or it's to people in your camp or your team that you know where to find me. I don't hide. Here's the problem. With Mello, who I've known for more than a decade, he's a guy that I communicate with often. I should have spoken to him before I went on the air because I have access to him. Because the number one question he asked me, how the hell could you go on the air and say that without calling me? You always call or text first. Why did you not do that this time? And I was like, you in Rio. You know, you're at the Olympics. 
He said, you've reached me when I've been out of the country before. He got me. He's right. That's why I had to come on the air and confess to that and man up and apologize because I felt the way that I felt and I would still feel the same way if indeed he meant the quote the way that it was the way that it was the way that it was taken. But the fact of the matter is, had I reached out to him like I normally do, I would have gotten his perspective. And this time I did not do that. That's on me. I got to apologize to that man. I was wrong. Fine, should have reached out, but the point I think remains doesn't that's still the content of the quote is still the same. It, he, of course, he wants to win a championship, but if he doesn't, he'd be okay with the three gold medals and all that. Could you imagine if you're an ISO scorer? If that's what you do, you have that kind of mentality. Could Kobe Bryant? Could you imagine Kobe Bryant ever making a claim like that if he was this deep into his career without a championship? That one day he'd be okay with well, gold that's medals. What Mello and stuff? was saying because I had our researchers look for the articles. I don't see the articles anywhere, anything like that. I had I, I saw guys. You know, Mello is saying that's not what he said. He's saying, look, looking back on it, this is how I would feel. But damn it, I'm still going for it because I'm not satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's saying. I'm saying that's day, not good enough. Looking back on it, it should kill him. I got three you. gold medals are better than you. no college championship, no you. gold medals. The only yeah. thing that should be on his mind it at is, that level of is. play is we championship. You know now. what? I don't disagree with that, but I still should have reached out to him. Yes. All right, we'll move on now. Coming up, Kirk Cousins said the Redskins should be the Spurs of the NFL. Interesting comparison.